All right, sports fans, welcome out to uh, episode number one of the Gridiron 64 podcast. My name is Gabriel Trevino, and I have my crew with me. We're going to be coming on every Monday evening at 730. We're going to be talking about uh, football in the Coastal Bend area. I'll introduce the crew here in just a minute. I just kind of want to give you um, a little sum sum about how this Gridiron 64 is going to work. So we're going to be on every Monday uh, at uh, 7.30, uh, and we're going to have a total of nine games on the Gridiron 64 schedule. And uh, the nine games, well, eight, eight of those games will consist of games in the Coastal Bend area. So some of the uh, teams might come on more than once, obviously, um, and we will feature in that a game, a game of the week, uh, which eventually at some point we will be streaming that game live through the uh, GT uh, uh, Sports, uh, but that's somewhere down the road. But we will feature a game of the week, and then the ninth game will be a state game, and so that'll be a game that will be picked by myself and the crew uh it's a game Daddy. that can feature up in the uh dallas area the houston area uh the valley it can just go any game uh in in texas uh so it'll be different so that'll be the ninth game and, and then the crew uh, and myself we will break each one of those games down uh the guys are doing their research on these uh teams uh so every week you know we'll we'll basically let uh the uh the fans know uh their get their uh record and uh and we'll just break it we'll preview uh the games and then we'll also break uh, the week before the games down and then at the very end the guys and myself will make a prediction and we'll be predicting on who we think will win the games when the podcast is over it'll be uploaded um um at six o'clock in the morning the next day which will be tuesday on our youtube channel uh, GT Sports, uh, and this will be every week throughout the regular season, um, and um, we'll keep a record. Uh, the guys and myself will keep a record, and it will also be posted. Uh, the poll will be made and posted on our uh, Great Iron 64 Facebook and Twitter page, and so this is the first time, so we're still trying to work out some kinks, but I think it's, we're going to have a lot of fun, and throughout the season, we're looking for three uh, more more uh, sports fanatics, right, that can join our group. We want a total of seven. Uh, so we're looking for three more people. It could be a female, don't have to be a male, it could be a female that loves football to join the group uh, and uh, join in with us uh, about an hour, hour and a half every Monday to break these games down. So if you're interested, uh, you know, um, let me know. Uh, I'll give you at the end of the podcast uh, my email where you can email us uh, email me, let me know if you're interested and then we can talk and I'll introduce you to the crew and uh, hopefully, you know, we can work something out, but we are looking for three uh, the other people, other sports from next to come on and join us on the Great Iron 64 podcast. So now I'm going to introduce my crew uh, and down uh, I've got uh, Tony Pena uh, it's the first time, of course, this is the first time on the Great Iron 64. Tony, how you doing? Oh, you're on mute. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm, I'm doing good, Gabriel. Uh, I'm just ready to get this season started. I can't wait for some high school football. Absolutely, man. I, let me tell you, Tony, I, I'm excited about the gridiron. I got some great ideas. I'm just glad that you guys are joining in on the team. And like I said, we're going we're gonna to try to expand it and, and make it bigger. But I'm excited uh, talking about these, these uh, games. It's going to be a great year for us. And then we've got the coach, Steve Cantu. Steve, how you doing? Blessed, brother. Happy to be here. Uh, and then, of course, we've got Johnny Zavala. Johnny's been with me uh, from the very beginning. Johnny, how you doing? Doing good, doing good, doing good. There you go. Uh, we've got uh, three uh, other podcasts, so we stay busy with sports. We talk to the, the four of us are sports fanatics, so we talk sports 24-7. We're talking at home. We're talking. We're texting. We're on the podcast, uh, at work. I mean, we, we just talk sports 24-7, and it's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to be able – to research and talk about other teams uh, from the Coastal Bend area. There's a lot of talent around the Coastal Bend area, so we just want to be able to bring some of those teams and some of that talent uh, uh, to you guys. Also, we're looking to bring in coaches from the Coastal Bend area starting in week two. Uh, we'll reach out uh, to a coach, uh, and hopefully he can come in and join us uh, Monday evenings to talk some football, you know, maybe 20, 25 minutes, if that. 
uh, but we may have a question uh, and just kind of, you know, showcase uh, that coach and his players and see, you know, what the expectation is uh, for 2021. 20, uh, so we're looking now to see if we can get some coaches from the Coastal Bend area on the Gridiron 64 podcast. So, guys, if you're ready, let's go ahead and start breaking down the schedule. Uh, we put the schedule down a few days before we come on the podcast. You look for it on the weekend on the Gridiron 64 Facebook and Twitter page, and you'll be able to see the nine games that we'll be discussing um, on uh, Monday's podcast. So once again, here we go with number one uh, on the schedule uh, for week one on the Gridiron. We have the Orange Grove Bulldogs. Uh, of course, this is going to be the first game. They'll be traveling uh, to Sinton to play the Sinton Pirates. Sinton, they're ranked 10th. Uh, in state, this is a team that I think went to the third round last year. Uh, they're coming back fully loaded with everybody on offense, basically, and on defense. So they're they're hyped. Uh, they're they're you know they're destined to uh, go far in the playoffs. Um, but we'll see. Last year, Orange Grove did beat them. Uh, this year, we'll see if Orange Grove can make it two in a row. So I'll start off with Johnny first. Johnny, kind of break this uh, game down for us. What's your thoughts on Orange Grove now traveling to Sinton? Well, last year was a good shootout. Uh, that was a good game last year. It kind of like surprised a lot of people that Orange Grove came out, you know, the way they were. But it did show what kind of quarterback that they had last year. Uh, and him being a sophomore, you know, this, he's going to have a lot of caliber coming back again with the junior year. You know, his sophomore year, he had 3,400 yards and 39 touchdowns as a sophomore. Uh, but he did lose his uh, leading receiver. Uh, Connor is kind of yellow fed, you know, but he does have another receiver called Trevor Garcia that did have 500 of his yards. You know, that's going to, that's considered going to be his go-to guy this year. Um, they got a strong linebacker coming back. Um, he had 124 tackles last year. You know, that's pretty good for a high school a team that didn't go into the playoffs pretty much, you know, not deep in the playoffs. Um, but I, I think Sitton's going to pull it out this year. I think they were the game. I think that that sophomore quarterback was going to pull it out for them. Um, Sitton's ready this year, and uh, I'm going to have to go strong with Sitton on this one. Tony? Yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and agree with Johnny on this one. Uh, you know, even though uh, Orange Grove uh, did surprise Stinton last year, uh, you know, and, the, and that quarterback, he's the real deal. But, man, uh, Stinton had a lot of guys come back this year, and, and uh, Stinton's not the type of team that's going to – let you take it from them twice, you know what I mean? And 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 then you know they proved that with the uh, with the uh, Rockport uh you know winning district the year before and then and then Sinton coming around and, and winning district this past season. So uh you know Sinton Sinton Sinton's got a really good squad. They got the brothers coming back. They got a you know a pretty stacked offensive line. So uh I'm I'm gonna have to agree with Johnny and go with Sinton on this one. Steve I think Steve froze up a little bit. He'll be with us here shortly. I'm going to have to uh, – I'm going to tell you something. Uh, last year, I was really surprised uh, that Orange Grove uh, uh, pulled the win out uh, against Sinton. They, Sinton, they struggled last year the first couple of games before they got it going. I think they got it going maybe in the third week, and then they just didn't turn back, right? They just they just went. But they did struggle uh, early on uh, in the uh, uh, season. Um, I think it was a lesson learned. Um, this team is 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 poised. They're ranked tenth, uh, and, and it just depends on what you think about the rankings. Um, we've talked a lot on our podcast about rankings uh, and what they mean, but this is a very good football team. Um, the quarterback uh, from Orange Grove is probably one of the best quarterbacks in the Coastal Bend area, really. Uh, but you know, the people around him, I, I think, from what I have read. Uh, it's going to take a while for these guys to gel. I think they're going to get it going, uh, but it's going to take some time. I don't think it's going to happen in week one. And unfortunately for Orange Grove, you know, they're facing a team that, that's coming. They're hungry. And with the loss that they had last year, they want to beat Orange Grove. And I don't think they just want to beat them. I think they want to prove a point to these guys. So I think it's going to be hard. You know, they got uh, a great quarterback down there. Um, it's going to take some time for him to gel with, with the, the new guys around him. So I think, 
uh, Sinton's going to pull it out. I think the offense is just going to be too much. Uh, I don't know much about the Orange Grove defense. And then they're playing in Sinton. And so I, I, I'm going to give this game uh, to the Sinton Pirates. Obviously, I'm not going to put a score out there, but I do think that it's – it's uh, Sinton is going to take this. Coach, I'll go to you. Right now you have uh, – uh, Tony, Johnny, and myself going Sinton. Uh, will you go the other way, or are you going to go with the group? You got them right. I got flair. I got cojones, baby. Hey, listen, this Orange Grove team, all right, this Orange Grove team ain't no joke. You guys are taking them way too lightly. I mean, if a guy throws for almost 3,500 yards, 39 touchdowns, wouldn't you say he classifies as being pretty good? And, and, and the defense is there. They got a kid, Caden. I'm going to kill his last name. I know it. it Schroeder tier, 124 tackles. This guy's a tackling machine, okay? So he has enough parts. You know, these guys are throwing up some crazy numbers last year. They lost some guys, but they're going to come back. And I'm telling you, bold prediction, week one, Orange Grove over Sinton. You heard it right here on the Grid I-64. The coach is going Orange Grove. The, the other I'm going to be that guy. Sinton. All right. Johnny's writing that down to make sure he gets it right. <laughs> Johnny, yes. I'm already ahead. See, you guys are playing from behind already. You got to get out your comfort zone. Absolutely. I, I, I hey, Look, Coach, I think it's going to be a good one. I just, you know, I, I, I think since coming, but we shall see. See. Uh, what, 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 go ahead, Johnny. <laughs> nah. Oh look! One, oh. One, one of the one of the things that you that I think you got to consider, Steve, is going in to Sinton's house is tough all by itself. No matter what okay. town you bring, going into Sinton's house is tough. Trying to win over there is tough. I don't know what it is about the atmosphere, but that whole town they're parked all around that stadium, trucks, and you know they 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 pack it up. It's hard to win over there. Did they not win yet? Didn't, didn't they beat them last year? Orange Grove? In Orange Grove. In Orange Grove. Oh, they're man, up. I don't they're know. Coming they're coming to Sinton this year. Yeah, so, but, man, so. come on. I don't know. I, I'll tell you this, guys. I, I Sinton lost know. their first two games last year, though. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. So, yeah. I mean, you know, maybe you could put some stock into that. Maybe, you know, they stumble out of the shoots again this year and – and old Coach Steve looks like a genius. I, I will say this, Coach, about Sinton. We talk a lot about their offense, not too much about their defense. And so I think, you know, if that defense, you know, is enough to par. This this quarterback, he's going to he's going to do good. And, and this this could be a shootout. Uh, I don't know. It's going to really depend. Can that can that Sinton defense hold uh, this quarterback down? You know, he, he's he's got to gel with these guys, but. You know, he is a good quarterback, so we'll see. But my, my money's going to be on Sinton uh, in this game. But we shall see what happens when we come back next Monday and break a week one down here on the Gridiron 64. Uh, game two uh, on the GI 64 uh, schedule, you have the Battle of the Wildcats. You have the Carolina Wildcats. This team is destined to, to go all the way, I think, this year. They lost 20 seniors last year, so they're still ranked up there high. Um, and they'll be playing against – uh, the Gregory Portland Wildcats coming in with Coach Davis, I believe is his name. His first year coach there at Portland. Uh, Tony, I'll go to you first. Battle of the Wildcats, who do you got, Cal Allen or Gregory Portland? Yeah, um, you know, GP has really struggled the last few years. Uh, you know, they got a new coach, uh, but Cal Allen has the same coach. And I think, and they lost a lot of players. And we we talked about this the other day. They lost a lot of players. I think you were saying 20 seniors, something like that. They lost a lot of players, but there's some, you know, that there's some that Danaher does. I know he has something in the works. I know he knew he was losing some people and he got some people uh, ready to fill those spots. So I have no doubt in my mind, it's going to be a lopsided game. Carolina's going to take that game. Coach? Well, I mean, there, there's just – the cards are just stacked too high against GP. I think uh, I think they continue to struggle, and it's just too much Danaher. Too much Danaher. Yeah, no, I got GP losing that game 100%. Coach, 
Johnny? Yeah, as Tony was saying, GP has been on a downfall this year. And uh, we talk about uh, leaderships at different levels, different sports and stuff like that. He talked about the GP losing some – I mean, the Callen loses so many players, seniors. Well, this coach is coming to a new, fresh team. I mean, it, GP lost 38 seniors, you know, so they don't really have a good leadership going on over there right now. Um, this is, you know, a, a 35 to seven game last year. I just, I just don't see it as, you know, as mentioned before, you know, Danaher has been there. The program has been there, the same program. These kids been running it since junior high, you know, I, I just don't see a new program beating Danaher's program. So I'm going to go easily with Cal and, yeah, guys, I got to go with the group. I, I think Cal Allen is going to run all over group reporting. I think it's going to take time for this coach. I, I, I'll i tell you this. I, I want to follow Greg reporting um, really close this year. I, I think it's going to, if they're going to do anything, it's going to take some time. I think week one, it, it's hard to come out. Um, you know, he's still trying to, you know, get get to know his players and and, and, and trying to, you know, run, run the offense. I think everything's going to change first year coach. Um, and so it's, it's, it's hard when you're trying to do that. And the first team that you got to play in this, this uh, 2021 year is the Carolina Wildcats. So it, it's, it's going to be tough, even though the game, I believe, is in Gregory Portland. Uh, I just think Carolina is going to be way too much. Uh, I think it's going to be a blowout. Uh, but I do want to see what GP, if they'll continue to get better as the season goes. They're still going to be in a pretty tough district uh, uh, with the Victoria schools. So we'll just have to see. We'll play close attention, but but definitely I, I've got to go with Cal Allen. I just don't see a way GP uh, uh, can pull this one out, uh, and for the reasons that we have all stated here on, on the Great Iron Sixty Four. Right. Game three on the G uh, GI Sixty Four is we've got the Florida Bluff Hornets traveling uh, to uh, Trojan uh, territory out there in Beeville, uh, and, and I, I listen. Now, this is going to be a really good one. I, I'm, I'm personally expecting Beaver to be a lot better this year than they were last year. Uh, they ended up on, the, uh, I think they won the, maybe the last couple of games. I'm not sure, but Beaver's got Sosa out there. And all four of us know uh, Coach Sosa. You know, he's a great coach. He's pr- basically won everywhere he's gone. Steve, I'll go to you first, man. Who do you got, the Flower Bluff Hornets or the Beaver Trojans? Yeah, although I see on paper, I think uh, I think Beaver will – uh, show some improvement. Uh, I got Flower Bluff winning this game, uh, uh, maybe by two scores. Johnny? Uh, I think it's still going to take a little. I, I, I see maybe some improvement with Bebo this year. Um, but, man, they, they, they. They lost a lot of seniors themselves. I mean, they lost 20 seniors off their team. Uh, that's a big, that's a big drop off there. And Flower Bluff coming off an excellent season. I mean, going 11 and two on the season. Um, I just, I just don't see Bevo coming up beating the Flower Bluff this year. Uh, so I'm gonna have to go with Flower Bluff. Tony. Yeah, uh, you know, Bevo did get better uh, as the season went on um, last year. I remember they they shot it out with, uh, I believe it was Miller. They had a, a pretty high scoring game, uh, but uh, I, I don't think they're gonna have the firepower this year to beat Flower Bluff. Uh, you know, Flower Bluff is a team that goes deep in the playoffs and a really tough division. So I'm, I'm going to say that Flower Bluff wins this game, and I'm going to go with Steve uh, with, with two scores. All right, guys. Now I'm giving the Beaver Trojan some love. I do. Th- I think we'll be better this year. I think that's going to be a playoff team uh, in, in, their, in their district when it's all said and done. Now I'm saying it here week one. I think this team's going to be much improved. I like Sosa, man. I've, I followed this guy. He's a good coach. They, uh, you know, they they coach tough out there. Now, I'm not, you know, I think they're going to be better. I, th- I, I, I thought that they would make the playoffs last year. They kind of fell apart, lost to some teams. I think they should have won. So, uh, Sosa just got back to Beaver, too. So, it takes time to put the all, all you know, to, to put his system back in place down there. This is 
uh, a full year, you know, last year with COVID and stuff. So I think they had a full year now. Um, I know he's lost some players, but I, I do think Beville is a team that's going to make the playoffs. They won't be at the top of the district, but I think that they can get in. Um, but Flower Bluff on the other side has it. Now they lost their running back, uh, but they've got Viegas. He's about a six foot six, um, a quarterback out there that, that's strong and can throw the ball. And he does have some weapons down there. I like their offensive line. Their defense is solid. I, I think absolutely this would be uh, uh, just the cards are stacked against people to beat a really good Florida Bluff team that Johnny talked about that, that that had a great season last year. So I don't see Beaver beating Florida Bluff. I actually see Florida Bluff, you know, you know, going, uh, you know, because Florida Bluff is going to be traveling to Beaver, I believe. They're going to go in there and beat them. But again, Beaver will get better if they stay healthy as the season progresses. And I think this team will sneak into the playoffs uh, when it's all said and done. But I'm taking Florida Bluff in, in week one uh, over Beaver. Uh, the number four uh, game uh, on the GI 64 schedule, we got the Corpus Christi Veterans Memorial Eagles traveling to Coyote Land out there, man. Coyote, they're going to be playing the Alice Coyotes. Now, we know how tough it can be to play out there in Alice. Now, if there's one place in South Texas where the fans really get rowdy, it's in Alice. Referio's not too far behind, but Alice, it gets really rowdy out there. So, Johnny, I'm going to go to you first, man. Who do you got? Do you have the vets? And let's, let me just say, Vets lost their coach. They have a new coach coming in. Some of the players, you know, there's been rumors that some have gone back to Carroll. I don't know how true that is, but they did lose their coach. So they got a first-year coach. Alice or Vets? Who do you got, Johnny? Well, Alex is a tough place to play at. Very tough. Intimidating for some people that never gone there before. Um, they're the kind of crowd that goes sits on this side, you know, and intimidates the crowd. Um, guys from 1970, 1980 wearing their band uniform sitting in the crowd, you know, the type, type of crowd they have. Um, but CC Vets, man, they, they, it's, even though they lost their head coach, um, I'm pretty sure they're losing a few other players here and there. Um, coming off a 13 and one record last year, I just going to deep fifth round of the playoffs. I mean, I can understand second round, third round, you know, and Alice just mysteriously creeped in with a two and three record into the playoffs, in which they got. You know, they had a, a rough COVID season. You know, I think they had like three, four games forfeited because of COVID. Um, now, two of those games were against Cal Calhoun and Cal, and so I, I don't think they would have pulled those off in a way. Um, I, just, I just think the Vets are just going to be too strong for Alice this year. Um, you talk about whole field of values for Alice. They, I think they only had one game at home last year because of COVID. Um, so... Are there, is the crowd back this year or not? Yeah, that's my question. But I think the vets are going to take this in over Alex. Coach? Hey, listen. <clears throat> I'm on the fence right here. Yeah. I, I like Alex. I know how tough it is to win in Alex. I know how crazy the crowd is. Uh, I don't know if they're going to uh, have their facility open, but I know they're opening up in a new facility down there, too. So, I mean, it, it, and if, if it's construction's done in time or if it's open or not, I'm not too sure on that, but I know that they're opening a new facility here pretty soon. I mean, what better way to open up a new facility with a big win against Vets? Uh, you know, I mean, I think Addis got enough. You know, they got, they got 25, 25 lettermen returning. You know, they lost 17. And, you know, uh, not very many starters, you know, only, only six on offense, seven on defense. Hey, but those boys fly around down there. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's branded in them. You know, it's sports in them. Those guys, they know how to play at home. And for my second upset pick, I'm going to go with the Alice Coyotes over the bets, baby. Ooh. Man, Coming out he said, he said, oh. boy, I'm telling you, and that's what we do here at the Hey, listen. Week. At the end of week one, I'm going to have such a lead on you guys. Y'all going to be playing from behind. 
Johnny, Johnny, you're going to have to pick all kinds of sleeper picks to come catch me, Johnny. Oh, oh you heard it, Johnny. You heard it. Well, you're definitely making hey, some picks out well, there, after Coach. After week one, I wouldn't have to worry about those sleeper picks. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, I, hey, I'm shaking it up over here, man. I'm shaking it up this year. Hey, 2021 is a different year, man. Uh, Great Iron 64, we're taking it to another level over here. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Tony, are you are you going with the Coyotes or are you are you sticking with Betts, man? Betts has been good for a long time, T. This this is what I'm gonna say, and this this has to do with this has a little bit to do with the game we just talked about with the Beville game. I know you feel like uh, you know Beville is a good team. They're gonna be better. They got the same coach from last year, but Alice is a team that I think will make the playoffs again because Alice is a playoff team. They always have been, yeah. and they've always played in a tough district. So they're used to making the playoffs. Uh, so it, it didn't surprise me that they barely squeaked in there with that record. Um, but I think, like I said, Alice makes the playoffs, but I don't think they're going to be CC vets. I really don't. Uh, I, now, CC is not going to go in there and blow them out. They're not going to blow them out, but they're not going to beat them. They're not going to beat them. It ain't going to happen. I, I and I want I, I I I would like to see Alice win some more games uh, than they did last year because I know they got a good program, but they're not going to be. They're not going to win the first week. Listen, vet, the vets open up a new school. They player pool from all these surroundings. They catch lightning in the bottle. They, you know, this coach came on and he grabbed these guys and, and he took them places. You know what I'm saying? You can't replace that. You know, we've had, we've gone through those spells where we thought we were just going to pick up where we left off and replacing a coach. It don't happen that easy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can't just pick up somebody's playbook and, 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 and uh, trust me, they probably, he probably brought his own. So, I mean, you just can't, you know, I mean, how much of it's going to change? How much of the offense change, if any, you know what I'm saying? So, so you know, obviously you want to come and, and, and make your own, you know, you, you know, bring your own stamp with you. So what about, the, what about the learning curve there for the boys? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I, I, I think it's too tough to do to expect to come out and, and just, you know, be that team that you were, you know, the past three years. You know, I, I don't see it. Well, um, I tell you what, I, I like Alice. Um, they're they're tough every year, and this is a team. Um, they're hungry. They didn't play a lot last year, and they and they, yeah. they want to prove that they're a powerhouse. They always have been, and they're coming out. I think with a chip on the shoulder. They have the same coach, um, running the same system. Um, they've got some people coming back. I don't know exactly, you know, in the key positions, what they have as far as quarterback and the run game and their pass game and stuff, but they always got athletes in Alice. And that's one thing you can say. And I do agree with Tony when I think Alice will be in the playoffs. Um, I, I think this team, they're going to be contending for a play. I don't know if they'll make it, they'll be continuing the playoffs, you know. And you go on the other side with Betts. Betts has been good for such a long time. And, you know, I'm a little concerned because they got a new coach and we don't know exactly – how that's going to play. You know, you, you heard coach Steve say, you know, you, you just can't come in and, and start. You got, you got athletes, but it, it takes some time. If this game was being played in the fourth week or the last preseason game before district, I might take the Alice Coyotes, but because it's in week one, I got to go with Betts. I just think Betts is going to pull it out simply because I, I it, it's, it's, that's a team that has been good since they opened. Go ahead, coach. Hey, don't you know that the Alice Coyotes had them boys out there at 12 o'clock midnight? Once that time said they could start practicing, them boys were having midnight practice. They've been on the field. They're hungry. They're going to be back. Coyotes, baby. Yeah, I, and listen, I agree with you. I, 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 that's, a, that's a winning tradition. They've had it for years. But I think it's, you know, vets and those athletes, I think don't have enough to pull it out I, I you know i it's hard for me to go against Betts. although I, like i said i think alice is going to get better as as the season goes uh, they stay healthy they got a great coach out there but i just think Betts, you know to me my gut tells me you know that's still a team that has enough to pull it out against alice but if they were playing the last preseason game before district starts if these two guys are meeting in week four or something like that 
I don't know, man. I might jump to Alice because I think that team is going to get better. But for week one, I am going to stick with the Eagles uh, of the Corpus Christi area. We shall see what happens when we come in next Monday in week two. Hey, um, hey, one more note. I, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sure the coach is going to have no house party rules uh, for the Alice Coyotes this first his first couple of weeks of the season. I know that that threw a that hurt him last year. Like Johnny said, that COVID got him. And, uh, yeah. and I remember seeing on the news that, you know, that they were all at a house party, you know, before before opening day. And a <laughs> lot of them got sick from that. So I'm sure there's a no house party rule going on over there. Now. Oh, yeah. Well, I bet I bet <laughs> that won't happen this year. Absolutely. Uh, game five on the G uh, I-64. Uh, we have uh, the Ingleside Mustangs uh, traveling to Mathis to play the Pirates. Steve, I'll go to you first. Ingleside Mathis. Hey, well, I tell you what, you know, seeing how uh, I picked Ingleside to make the playoffs, and and I do, I do like them. I think they're definitely going to be on the upswing this year. Uh, they're going to be uh, uh, contending up there with with uh, you know Santon and Rockport. Uh, I do got them. Like I said, I do have them making the playoffs. Uh, you know, they're a great program down there. Those boys are strong. They're they're looking sharp. Uh, now, Mathis, you know, I, I know I know going, you know, I played against Mathis a ton, too, in the youth program and getting older. You know, those guys carry a lot of tradition out there and they play they play with a lot of pride. They've always have. They've always have. You know, they, they got uh, seven returning on offense, five on defense. I think they're going to be a, a pretty good team. I got them probably, uh, uh, man, I don't know, fifth, sixth in their in their division. Uh, they're definitely going to make it tough uh, for Ingleside, but uh, I got Ingleside uh, pulling away. Uh, gosh, I wanted to say three scores, but I'm going to stop myself short and say uh, Ingleside by two scores. Ooh. Tony? Uh, well, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to agree with Steve that Ingleside is going to be Mathis. I'm going to agree with him on that. What, what I'm going to add to that is that I think the score is going to be lopsided. I think Ingleside oh, yeah. tears them up. I think Ingleside tears them up. Ingleside, uh, I don't think they like the way it went down for them last year, uh, you know, being picked last in the district. Not last, but to make the playoffs, you know, being in the fourth spot and being in the – you know, maybe in the fourth spot, maybe not even in the playoffs by, by some, uh, depending on who you talk to this year, you know what I mean? And, and they, they want to, they want to prove a point. So I think Ingles is going to come out here and, and they started their season off really, really good last year uh, in the preseason. So I, I expect them to do the same thing this year. Uh, they're, they're out to prove a point. They're out to show that they're a, a number three team, you know, and, and uh, some people might, um, you know, think they might even, uh, be a number one or two team. I, I don't. I don't think that's going to happen. But I think they want to come out here and prove that that they're not going to be, you know, the fourth spot. So we'll see. But I think it's going to be lopsided. Johnny, are you going to show the Mathis Pirates any love? Nah. No. As Steve was saying, you know, the youth program. Um, I haven't done any of that in a couple of decades. Um, Math is being good in the youth program, but we see that in the Robstown area too. Um, when they're in the youth, true. they're awesome. But as they get older, they disappear. Um, so I don't see Mathis beating Ingleside this year, um, especially them. Steve was picking them at the fifth and sixth spot, you know, in their district. Well, that's where they fell in last year was the fifth spot. Um, mm -hmm. But they're two and four record. Um, so I'm going to strongly go with Ingleside on this one. Um, we'll see how, where they fill it in our district, you know, and I think some of the Valley teams could put a little pressure on them, you know, they were the Ingleside that were one and done in the playoffs last year. So we'll see how that goes. Do you want to give a score? <sighs> Gee. I give Ingleside three first downs up. No love for the Mathis Pirates. My God, man. I'll tell you what. I, I, I'm not, I, listen, listen. 
there's a prize at the end of the season. So I, 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 you know, I, I, I can't let my emotions run wild and want to be there. I got, I got to play this close. Um, listen, I don't know much, much about Mathis. I know they, they struggled. They have not been the Mathis team of the past. Ingleside is up and coming. I, I, I like what Coach Hamrick has done in Ingleside in the program. But I think it's taken them. It's taken Ingleside. It, they've taken a beating since Hamrick's been there. I mean, there, there were teams that were just really wiping them out when he first got there. And every year, that team has progressed. They've gotten better. But they're still in a very tough district uh, with Rockport because Rockport's been good for the last couple of years. Sinton um, has kind of been down a little bit, but now they're back up. Now you got the Valley teams. So it hasn't been an easy road for Ingleside, but progressively they have been more competitive and they've gotten better. I do think that they will beat a Mathis. If, if, if I'm correct, they're going to be traveling to Mathis. I don't know if they're going to beat them by three or four touchdowns. I think it's going to be a lot closer than what we think. Um, but I think uh, Ingleside is going to pull it out. I, I just, you know, I, I think they're going to be better this year than they were last year, and they were and they were pretty good last year. So I, I, I think they'll continue with their players that they got coming back. Now, they did lose a couple of key players. To graduation, uh, but I think they, they they showed a lot of underclassmen last year, played really great, uh, and they played Rockport actually tough uh, about two years ago. They played Rockport tough in Rockport the first half. I mean Rockport pulled away, but it wasn't until the second half. So this is a team that can get, get, get that can get physical and can play. Um, so I think they'll be better, and they'll definitely be Mathis. But I don't think it'll be a, a blowout uh, like we're saying here. Uh, but I am going the Mustangs. Game six uh, on the GI-64, we've got uh, the Aransas Pass Panthers going up against the Rockport Ford Pirates. You guys got your RF caps on, so I, I think I kind of know uh, where you guys are going to be going with this. But uh, I'll go with Johnny first. Uh, Johnny, uh, listen, before you make your, your, your pick, uh, or, you know, if there's one team that Aransas Pass wants to beat, it's the Rockport Ford Pirates. They, they get ready for that game. They come, they, they lay it all out. And the last couple of years, uh, they've hung in tough. Rockport has not wiped these guys out the last, you know, two or three years. We, we kind of struggled a little bit, got it going in the second half. We beat them last year 26 to zero. Not a real big, big score. So I'll ask you, um, I'm pretty sure I know where you're going, but who do you got, AP or RF? Well, I'm easily going to go with RF. Uh, not only because I'm from here, um, I just, I just think Rockport is pretty strong this year. Uh, they're competing for our district championship. Um, Aranz is coming off to the new coach. Um, we don't know what they're going to come out with. So it's, you know, our um, pretty much veterans against rookies, pretty much how this game is going to go. Um, hopefully this year we don't come out sloppy as a first game as it was last year. Uh, so hopefully this game can show the area what Rockport's really about. So I'm going with Rockport easily. Tony? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely I'm going to go with Rockport. Uh, you know, uh, they have been, uh, you know, like like you said, you know, Aransas Pass, they, they come out and they want to beat Rockport, just like they want to beat Ingleside. I mean, it's just they're in the middle of both of us and they want to beat one of us, if not both of us. And, and uh you know, uh, they, they play tough for one half. But, you know, like we said all year last year, you got to play four quarters. And, and Aranza's pass, you know, the last two games, even though Rockport, uh, they didn't, didn't pull away early, you know, Rockport played four quarters of football, and that's why they won those games. And, and Aranza's pass, they, they didn't come – they didn't show up after the second half, after the first half. So uh, I look for Rockport to, to beat them uh, pretty good this year. Coach? Well, uh, I'm gonna go with the Pirates, Rockport Pirates, uh, in a landslide. I think I think we come out. Uh, I think we come out fine. Uh, we're just too quick. I think, I think we got too much depth. Uh, too many things going on. Too many guys that are actually pushing. You know, we got guys that are pushing other starters. You know, dying, waiting to get on the field. Uh, you know, AP's kind of in scramble mode right now. I know, uh, I know they moved their their uh, they got a, a linebacker. They moved their linebacker up to quarterback. He's going to be their starting quarterback this year. Uh, 
doesn't gr- throw a great ball. I mean, it, you know, I mean, you, you're on defense for a reason for those many years. Uh, you know, he doesn't have the, the tightest spiral. Uh, don't come out of his hands well. Uh, you know, moving the linebacker, the quarterback, I just think that uh, I, don't, I don't know. I think they're in scramble mode down there. They're just looking, you know, new coaching staff. They're just they're searching right now. And now the season's upon them. And I think it's going to be too late. Rockport, big. Yeah, I got to agree with you guys, too. Uh, and for the reasons you're saying, you know, they're trying to, to figure out what they got over there still in week one. You know, they're trying to figure out who's going to play what position. Uh, and, it, and it's tough to have Rockport Fulton, you know, week one where these guys already know where they're at. Uh, there's definitely some depth there. And then, uh, you know, we're competing for a district title. So for Rance's pass to come in with a new coach and trying to figure out, where, you know, where your players are going to be. And in week one, you got to face a really good Rockport Fulton Pirate team that's coming in with, you know, like I said, explosiveness with, with a quarterback uh, you know, uh, is a sophomore, but he's got one year and did really good last year. You, you, you've got uh, the running backs uh, that, are, that are all coming back, uh, you know, defensively. You know, pretty much the whole defense is back. So you got a lot of guys coming back from on the offensive side and the defensive side. So I, I'm with you. I think this is going to be the one year where Rockport is going to blow a Rancis pass out uh, from beginning to end. And I look for Rockport fourth to be big come Friday night. Um, game a seven on the GI 64. We got the Vaqueros from San Diego. They'll be traveling to play the Longhorns and George West. Coach, I'll go to you first. Are you taking the Vaqueros or are you taking the Longhorns? You're on mute, Coach. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I'm 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 sorry. You know, I'm a, I'm a kind of you know talk about what Johnny said. I know Johnny says I you know I lean heavy on the youth. You know, I've seen I've seen the kids play for many years. And I, I, you know, you can get an idea where that program is going to end up. You know what I'm saying? Once you've, uh, you know, you've coached against them, you know, since they were seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, then I left them, right? You know, I, I haven't seen none of them play uh, since they were 12, 13 years old. Well, they're now seniors, just like my son. George West, I think, is going to be a very, very good team. Uh, it Just based off of that. Tony, I don't have the, the records in front of me. I don't know if they've done it in the past. I don't know any stats. I'm just going to pick George West solely based off of all those years that we played against them. And now their boys are juniors and seniors. And I just look for that program to be good. I got George West big over San Diego. Now, Johnny, before you make your pick, San Diego is a good football team. They can play down there in San Diego. Now, George West is coming in with a new coach, if I read correctly. It's been a couple of months ago, but they've got a new guy out there in George West. And even though they're always competing uh, and they've got a good football team pretty much every year down there, football is big in George West. The San Diego team is not to be taken lightly. Who do you got? San Diego got, or George West? I got my country boys. They helped me last year on the predictions. I'm going to go with them again this year. Um, George West started off hot. They didn't finish too hot. Um, they came out fast out of the, out of their tracks, you know, so I'm going to go with George West on this one. Um, just because they gave me good luck last year. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to go with them again this year. Tony. I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with Steve, uh, and, and based off of the same thing that he said, you know, the, the reason I couldn't say the same thing about Mathis is because, you know, when you're in Mathis and you, you start growing up, you think you think about I go down the road to Orange Grove, take my kid over there. Or I go down the road to Odom, I take my kid over there. You know, I think they got a choice over there. And George West is not really a whole lot of places to go. You know what I mean? Unless you really move. But, uh, you know, th- those boys in George West, when our kids are when our kids are playing in that youth. They were good, and 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 you know, George West wasn't bad last year. I mean, they they went with they, you know they stood toe to toe with Stockdale. They you know they lost that game in overtime, and then they beat Odom in the first round of the playoffs. And Odom Odom was district champs, and Odom's a good football team. They got a good football program over there, and George West beat them. You know what I mean? So, I think George West is going to win that game. 
you know, I'm not I'm not saying nothing bad about San Diego because San Diego usually they know how to find running backs and normally they get one that could run the ball. Uh, it, you know, it's not going to be a lopsided score. It might be it might be uh, by a touchdown, maybe two touchdowns. But uh, I think George West is going to win that game. Fellas, fellas, fellas. This was in youth like six, seven years ago, man. Uh, let me guess. That you got in... two primos and a tia that lives in San Diego. <laughs> she said, you better not pick against my buddy. <laughs> this is a team. This is we're talking about a couple years ago, man, a few years back, man, when this team was good. And let me say this. Uh, Odom hasn't been the Odom team last year. Come on, man. They were good, but they weren't they weren't dominant like they had been before. On this so, district. Yeah. Well, they I mean, won but, district though, the same district as Tap. <laughs> well, but Tap is up and coming. I mean, you know, yeah, they, they the team. Gotta, I mean, I I watched George West. Okay, let's talk about that. I watched George West against Referio last year, and there was no competition at all. Referio ran all over them. Come so on. that would be the same thing as saying Odom ran over Tap, right? I mean, what does that say? That referral like, George George, anybody that competes within 21 points of referral, I think it's a good game. <laughs> That's a win. What was the final score? Uh, I want to say 42 21. 41 40, 41 12. 41 12. Oh. It was, and I watched it. Uh, I had the 12 and 21 backwards. <laughs> and uh, and it's a tie, but, then. but <laughs> but that's Referio, right? So what does that say for George West, right? That that that's Referio, right? Referio's beat that's a lot of other teams. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you this: uh, I'm gonna go with San Diego uh, because uh, I, I don't know much about San Diego, but I'm gonna go your, with these guys. I don't have family over there in San Diego. What your I do? Your tia's gonna do, be proud. Your tia's uh, gonna be proud. Uh, of you. I do. I do have some family in San Diego, but I like. I've always liked San Diego. Uh, they've got some guys down there that play really hard. And um, I hope that if George West wins and beats him really good, because there's going to be in about week two or three where George West is going to be playing with Furio. Hopefully we're going to be talking about them here on the Great Iron 64. I want that to be a good competition because Referio's got George West and Edna coming up before the district starts. So hopefully we'll have them here and we can break those games down. George West should win this game, but I'm going to take San Diego. I'm going to go out and live. Coach, Coach Steve does it all the time. I'm going to pick the Vaqueros, man. I, you know. Hey, these guys, nobody picks them. This is a team that they got nothing to lose, man. They got they got some guys down there. We talked about running back. They can run. They can play some football down there. Now, I don't know how good they are this year. Maybe that'll be a pick I'll regret. But I'm going to go ahead and take those vaqueros, man. I, I, I've seen a lot over the years. They win games that they shouldn't win. And they're pretty competitive. It's not like you know, people just wipe them out. You got to come in with your A game to beat this team. And so George West is coming in with a new coach. Um, it's a new system. Uh, week one. You know, if you're going to upset a team, week one would be the, the, the time to do it. So with the new coach, we'll see what happens. They've got athletes out there, but they got a new coach, I believe. And so I'm going to take San Diego. So for all you vaqueros out there, I'm on the Great Iron 64. I'm taking you guys. My crew's going with George West, but I'm taking you guys. I believe in you guys, and I think you guys are going to be George West, George West this Friday in week one. We shall see what happens when we come in next Monday evening. I, got, I just want to add one more thing. Last year... San Diego played West Oso in week one. Okay, now now West Oso was in our district, and, and we know how much they struggled. And they lost that game. They lost to West Oso week one. Okay. Uh, what, what was the uh, final record, T? But where uh, is San they Diego? Were San Diego. Did they make the playoffs last year or no? San Diego, uh, the record or the, yeah. or the score? Uh, no, they lost week one to to West Oso, right? In week one, but I want to know, uh, did they, uh, did they, they make they the playoffs? Were, they, were four, they were four and two overall, three and oh in district, you know, and, and they, they, they beat Bishop 51 9, Balfurius 50 to zero, Life for 28 24, and then they scored 30 points against Orange Grove, but they lost. Uh, so they got better, but I'm just saying week one, they struggled. I mean, they, they lost to West Oso week one. So uh, that was one of West Oso's only two wins of the season. One of them was against San Diego. So uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote the great coach Steve Cantu. It's not where you start. It's where you finish. <laughs> uh, 
I'm taking them San Diego Vaqueros, man. Don't worry, Vaqueros. I got your back. I got your back. My crew don't, but I got your back. We shall see what happens. Um, number eight on the GI 64 uh, schedule. Uh, it's our game of the week here on the Gridiron 64, and it's a good one. You got the uh, Calhoun Sand Crabs traveling to play Geronimo Navarro Panthers. Now, we know Navarro here in Rockport really good. So I'm going to go to the coach first. Coach, who do you got? This is game of the week one on the Gridiron 64. Do you got Calhoun or Navarro? Hey, I'll tell you what. Uh, I think I think, I think think we won this, uh, Tony. You and I uh, picked this game, you know, as the game of the week and wanted to be. If I'm not mistaken, we, we won that. So this is a game that I wanted to see uh, as game of the week. And – and, uh, you know, I, I may surprise you. I don't think I will. I, I'm going to go with Navarro. I think uh, Calhoun lost uh, a lot of key players, you know, uh, uh, and it's hard to replace those guys. And uh, I think Navarro is still going to be strong. And, uh, again, you know what I'm saying? I, it, may, I, it may be more of a homer pick for me, you know, because uh, uh, I do got family down there. But uh, I got Navarro. Johnny Navarro, and, and let me tell you, Johnny, uh, Navarro is in top 10 this year. I don't know where they rank, actually, but they're not in top 10 in the division. So I'll ask you, are you going Navarro or are you going for the Vaca? Well, let's just say Navarro only lost three seniors. Yeah. They have yeah. a whole stack of team coming back. Yeah. You know, and they, the only way they got eliminated was through Wimberley. You know, so that's that's a very impressive team coming back. What, what was that? Third round, fourth round, they lost fourth. Fourth round. So we lost only three seniors, four rounds in the playoffs. You know, and here we are going against Calhoun, losing our top running backs. You know, yeah. two of the guys that had 67% of their offense. Yeah. You know, guys that had 3,200 yards rushing. Last year, I just I just don't see Calhoun bringing up somebody from at their caliber. Um, I don't know what lineman they got coming back, uh, but that's a lot of offense to lose. Two key players and Navarro just losing three seniors on top of that, too. I'm going to have to go with Navarro on this one. Tony? Uh, yeah, it's a game that I want to see. Uh, you know, Calhoun had a really good team last year, the last few years, and they did lose uh, two big, two big backs. Uh, but I think I think Calhoun's going to be good. I think they're going to be good. Uh, you know, they they got to play with uh, with Miller and and Cal Allen in that in that uh, Division One Four A Division One uh, uh, district here. Uh, I don't know if they win district, uh, but. I don't think uh, as good as I think Calhoun still is this year. Uh, I don't think they're going to be Navarro. I'm going to have to go with Navarro on this one. Yeah, I'm going Navarro too. Uh, you know, last year I watched that game with Cal Allen uh, and Calhoun, and I, I said Cal Allen would beat them, and they did. They just they didn't do much offensively against that Cal Allen defense. Uh, they, those, those running backs couldn't get anything going. It was a real struggle for them last year, and they played in Calhoun. Cal Allen had to travel to Port Lavaca and, and, and they couldn't run on that Cal Allen defense. Now, Cal Allen's defense is good. Um, but, you know, when you got these stud running backs, I thought you know, I expected to see more last year from, from, from Calhoun uh, against Cal Allen than what we, than what we saw. Um, Navarro on the other side, they're good every year. They run the slot T. They run it probably better than, than – I think the only team that maybe runs the slot T better than them it might be Liberty Hill uh, when we play these guys. They're, they're very well coached out there. They're good offensively and de defensively. Um, uh, they play real good fundamental football. It's a hard team, tough team to beat. And I think with Calhoun actually losing these two uh, running backs, I think it will hurt them, regardless of what they got coming up. You know, losing these two guys, like Johnny said, and losing a lot of that offense, it's hard to replace those guys the very hard next year. Yeah, so um, as good as Cal Calhoun might be, I think in week one, uh, with Navarro bringing in all their players back, and, and already these guys have been in the system, both offensively and defensively, it's just a sure pick would be to take Navarro. It doesn't mean that Calhoun can't, can't, 
can win this game. But week one, you know, and then you've got all these guys coming back from one team and you're losing two of, 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 of your running backs, guys that really put you on the map last year. I, I just think, like Johnny said, I just think it's hard for Calhoun to overcome that and be a very good Navarro team that once again is going to be good this year. So I'm going with with Navarro in this one. I think it'll be a good one. Hopefully it's a good one. It'll be our game of the week. Um, but I'm going I'm going Navarro. As much as I like to go for Calhoun, I got to go with Navarro. And then of course, uh, the last game uh, on the GI64 that we'll break, that we'll preview. It's a state game that we pick. The guys here and I, uh, myself and, and the guys we pick, we kind of take a vote on the majority wins. Uh, and it's going to be a good one, guys. This is number two in Texas, South Lake Carroll, going up against number three, Highland Park. Johnny, I'll go to you first, man. This is a game that, that you wanted to see. Who do you got, South Lake Carroll, Highland Park? Okay, let me let me let me put a little uh, thing to that. Now, this is number two in six A, South Lake Carroll, against the Division One five A, number three Highland Park. Just not to get that confusion, because Highland Park is five A Division One. But they are still ranked number three in the state. Um, I just I just saw this pop up. Uh, I'm going off of uh, the the some of the preseason uh, state rankings. I forgot which one I got it off of. Um, these were two teams that made it to the state final. They did both teams didn't win it. Uh, South Lake Carroll lost to West Lake. 52 to 34. Highland Park lost to Ryan 17 to 7. Um, South Lake Carroll, as everybody knows, lost their quarterback. Uh, he jumped on to, to uh, college level there, uh, skipping his senior year, which is kind of unheard of almost. Um, I think. <laughs> This was hard. I mean, if he was there, this would have been a lot easier. Who can come up and take over the show now? Um, Highland Park's always been the Highland Park. Um, this close from winning the state champion. South Lake Carroll kind of got let that game go away. Um, I'm just going to go with the bigger school. That's the only way I'm going to make this prediction. So I'm going with South Lake Carroll. Mm. Tony? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and agree with Johnny. I'm going to go with the bigger school. I'm going to go with South Lake Carroll. Uh, you know, South Lake Carroll, I mean, just like Highland Park, but South Lake Carroll's always, they always got a, a, a winning program over there. They're tough to beat every single year. It doesn't matter if they get a new coach doesn't matter what the situation is and they got to move personnel around, you know, South Lake Carroll always competes. Uh, you know what I mean? And, and and I think that Highland Park will have their hands full against South Lake Carroll. And I think they, they win that game and it's not going to be a blowout, but South Lake Carroll wins that game. Hey coach, before you make your pick, listen, um, this is a good Highland Park team and South Lake Carroll just lost their best player. Yeah. I mean, I know that they got some good athletes around there, but you, you lost your quarterback. You lost your captain. This is the guy that makes it happen. This is the guy that throws the ball. This is the guy. Now the second stringer, he might be good, but you're second string for a reason. Okay. So you're not better than what they lost. So if they were playing just an average team, I'd say, okay, but man, you're playing another great team that's coming fully loaded. Who do you got? South Bay Carroll or Highland Park? Well, I tell you what, Seeing how I'm already two picks ahead of all of you guys already, I've already got, I've already got a lead. <laughs> you know, I mean, I almost feel like I can, I can take uh, Highland Park on this one, and just stretch it out a little bit further. Uh, but uh, uh, golly, man, why you hit me with that one, Gabe? You put all that pressure on me, man. Uh, no. No, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay with South Lake Carroll. All right. Uh, I'm not worried about losing my lead. I think I'm a. You know, at the end of this first week, I'm gonna be sitting up on top of the scrap heap, at least two games ahead. <laughs> and going in, uh, going into week two with a two-game lead, and the way Johnny's picking this year, 
And yeah, no, I'm a, I'm gonna stay with <laughs> South Lake Carroll. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, I, I do. I, South Lake Carroll is good. Here's the question that it boils down for me when I was thinking about this. So they lost their best player. South Lake Carroll lost their best player. Yeah. Now they they're a six A school, so they've got a bunch of great athletes, right? But you're taking a big six A school and you're taking a five A school. Now, what's the big jump there? I mean, is there a really big difference? I don't know. Maybe there is. Maybe there isn't. I'm not sure. But my the question to me was, could South Lake Carroll in week one overcome? Well, I think South Lake Carroll basically knew. Did this this guy did this this guy made the decision? But I think the coach knew a while back that he was probably going to lose it. So it wasn't like a surprise. We just came out. I'm leaving. They were prepared. I think they they knew that this was an opportunity and gave the coaches plenty of time to get ready for the season. And that's why I think South Lake Carroll will win it. Even though they lost the top guy, this coach knew there were talks uh, throughout the summer that he was going to go. I mean, it was almost, it was just really making the decision, coming to the coach and saying, I'm leaving. But I think everybody down in South Lake Carroll pretty much knew he was going to go. I mean, the opportunities were there, the things that he could accomplish. It just seemed crazy not to go, right? And so yeah. uh, I think that prepared the coaches. They weren't just left like, okay, I got to scramble. I got to do something. They were able to prepare in case we do leave them. So I don't think they got caught off guard. And I think that's the reason why South Lake Carroll will win. Um, and so I, I'm going to be with you guys. I think even though they lost their best player, they're still going to be good enough uh, to come out uh, and win this game on Friday. We shall see what happens, guys. So this concludes uh, week uh, one of the Great Iron 64 podcast. Um, these are the picks. It's recorded. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week, uh, next Monday uh, for week two. Uh, be looking out for our uh, page uh, on Twitter and Facebook page as uh, we'll be putting out week two schedule. Uh, once again, we'll be picking uh, seven games, eight games actually from the Coastal Bend area, uh, one of them being game of the week. Uh, and then, of course, we'll pick another state game. And the way that goes is uh, the majority wins. So if it's a tie, we talk about it, we decide. Uh, which one will be uh, the, the uh, state game for a uh, week number two. Also, uh, just to let you guys know, we'll be talking and we'll be reaching out to a coach here in the Coastal Bend area next week for week two. I don't have any idea who that coach will be. We will discuss it after the podcast. Uh, maybe, you know, think about it a day or two. Uh, and then uh, we'll discuss which coach we want to bring on. Uh, but once we decide, we'll send a uh, email to that coach and hopefully we can uh, have him on. Once um, we confirm and we do have a coach, we'll be putting it on our uh, Facebook uh, and, and Twitter page, Great Iron 64 Facebook and Twitter page. Uh, and then we'll bring them on uh, next week and, and talk about the 2021 season with that coach and the expectations for, for his team. So this should get really good. We're hoping to get you know coaches on pretty much every week while we're doing this, uh, maybe even bring in a player uh, or two. Not, not sure exactly. We're still trying to work out the Kings, but I know – that we have talked about at least bringing in a coach from the Coastal Bend area and, and, and showcasing uh, the talent that uh, that coach has coming up for the 2021 season. It's a lot of fun. So we're definitely going to be working very hard to have a coach with us uh, next week. Uh, and then, of course, we'll break down week one uh, and then we'll preview week two. That's all here on the Gridiron 64. So tune in. It's going to get better as the season progresses. So before I go, I always give my crew the last word. And so I'll go around the table and I'll start off with Tony first. Anything you want to say, Tony, before we call it a night? Yeah, I just want to say good luck to all the teams, you know, uh, uh, good luck on, on the on the first game of the season. And, uh, you know, I hope everyone uh, uh, I wish everyone. Uh, uh, what's it called? Luck and, and just, you know, I hope that all, all the kids play uh, uh, injury free football. That's what I want. Absolutely. To do. Injury free football, you know, start off the start off the season like that. And that's the one thing that we always uh, uh, pray for, right, is we don't want to see any injuries. It's a rough sport that they play. Hopefully we can stay uh, injury free and, and hopefully COVID doesn't hit a, a lot of our kids because that's another thing that we're dealing with uh, this season. Hey, before I go to uh, the coach, man, one last opportunity. You want to change any of your picks? Or are you good? Ooh. T. <laughs> Tony, are you good? Before I go oh. to the coach, Tony, are you good? You want to change any of your picks? Still got time. Oh, 
My picks are locked. I, I know Steve was looking around because he thought you were talking about his wild picks. Okay. That's what I, th- okay. <laughs> I, uh, I know. I he thought you. he know. I know he thought what I was thinking. <laughs> well, no, you still my have picks time to good. change it. Okay, so you're good. Uh, Coach, I'll ask you before I give you the last word. Do you want to change any of your picks? No, sir. I'm 100 percent right. locked in. All right. Uh, anything you'd like to say before we call it a night? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, Hey, I just want to remind everybody about the uh, uh, about the offer uh, Gabriel made at the beginning of the podcast. You know, we are looking to have uh, three new members added to um, to to the gridiron, and uh, not necessarily from Rockport, but surrounding areas. So, if you know somebody, if you're watching this, and you know somebody that's a football head like all of us, or just all around sports fanatic. Uh, please uh, reach out to Gabriel and, uh, you know, we love to have you. That's all I got, Gabriel. Absolutely. Uh, and Johnny? Oh, I got a few things. Uh, I want to give love to Carol this year. I think they're going to do Carol something. Carol who? What's her, what's her last name? I think they're going to do something this year. Um, they're they're going to be the Cinderella team this year. Uh, I see it happening. They ended the season good last year. They're coming back pretty strong this year. So I'm not, I'm gonna give you all a little love out there, Carol. You know, there I, I don't see y'all making the playoffs in y'all's district, but I see y'all making some noise out there competing this year. Um then I want to say that after week one, it looks like me and Tony gonna be tied at the top because <laughs> we picked the same exact games. You know, we're going to be one up on Gabriel and two up on Steve. So let's just take it home, Tony. <laughs> I'm going to be on the bottom of the barrel. Gee, <laughs> no. no, but I, I'm going to enjoy football. I'm glad we're starting this off. Um, hey, what better way, you know, to start this podcast and uh, share, share. Look, we're looking for people to share, share, share. Yes, you know, yes. Just put the word out there. Absolutely. And you don't have to be a male. It can be a female. You know, if, if you are a female that loves to talk football, uh, reach out to us. Uh, anybody that wants to come on, we're looking for three members. We kind of want to, you know, uh, um, kind of level the playing field, so to speak, right? I know we all got teams that, that we love. I mean, you know, so if you're from the Corpus area and you're from Miller, uh, for example, I know we are in Miller up there's going to be some love. No problem. We try to kind of stay no neutral. We don't, we don't, we don't belittle uh, any coaches or players or anything like that. We want to have some fun, right? We respect all uh, of the teams that are on the Great Iron 64 and that we talk about. But of course, you're going to have love for your own team. There's nothing wrong with showing some of that love here on the Great Iron 64. No problem. Uh, so if you're interested, if you love high school football and you love talking about it, uh, you know, contact me. Uh, my email is uh, gt, lowercase gt sports 64 at hotmail.com. Uh, just Again, gtsports64 at hotmail.com. Send me an email. Let me know your name, uh, where you're from, uh, you're interested. Uh, and, uh, of course, you know, I'll reach back out to you. And what we do here is we'll talk, you and I. And if it's something that you're really interested in, you know, we'll come in. I'll introduce you to the guys. We may do a little Zoom, no recording, but everybody come on and just kind of get a feel for each other. See if you like what we're, what we're all about and, and vice versa and bring you in and, and you give us uh, another point of view from where you stand. Uh, and I just think it makes the podcast a lot easier. And for you guys that are thinking about it, like I said, we're bringing in coaches and starting next week. Uh, you know, we, we, we pick a coach that we want to bring in. And then I work all week on trying to uh, contact that coach and bring him on uh, for every Monday and, and just kind of talk maybe 20 minutes or so. Maybe I'll join us have a question or two for him uh, so that we can talk a little bit about the 2021 season and, of course, his team. And we want to do that throughout the regular season. Once the regular season's over, the Great Iron 64 will continue with the playoffs, uh, and then it'll just kind of expand a little bit more. So we'll get into the playoffs. And once we get in the playoffs, we're going from 2A, 3A, 4A, and 5A. Not sure if we're going to do 6A. Still have to talk to the guys. But I know we'll be following the teams in five, four, three, uh, and two way all the way up uh, until uh, the final game uh, at the AT&T Center in Dallas. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a long season, uh, and we're just at the beginning stages. So we're going to be adding things as we go. We're talking to the guys. So it's going to be a lot of fun. 
Uh, and of course, uh, after this, uh, by six o'clock in the morning, I will be uploading this uh, episode one on the Gridiron 64 to our YouTube channel, which is GT Sports. Again, it's GT Sports on our YouTube channel. And then it's shared over to our Facebook and Twitter, Gridiron 64 um, uh, page. And so uh, tune in, guys. We'll be back next week. Uh, and also, we take questions. And so if you have a question for any one of the guys, Tony, Coach Steve, Johnny Zavala. My name is Gabriel Trevino. You can send your questions to GT uh, Sports 64 at hotmail.com. Again, it's all lowercase. We'll answer your questions. If I don't have the answers, one of the guys will research it uh, and we'll have it for you. We'll do the best we can. But we're going to have a lot of fun with the Great Iron 64. I want to thank my crew for joining me. Uh, we're going to be busy all week long. These guys are on another podcast on Wednesday and we do live streaming uh, for some of the games. So we're going to be busy all week long. And then we got a full-time job at that. So we're having a lot of fun guys. We hope we can have three more uh, people join us. Like I said, it could be a female as well uh, and just have a great football season. So guys, thank you very much. And until I see you guys on Wednesday, if I don't see you guys tomorrow at the game, man, I'll see you guys Wednesday. Have a great night. Uh, and think football, 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 baby. Stay blessed.